So as we've been considering this theme of healing now for many months, we come to the last sermon on the subject, and I need to remind you before we speak about this subject of the whole point of this. The whole point of the healing process is to restore in Christ the relationship, the healthy relationship with God the Father that we are supposed to have. The reason why we remain in our wounds is because instead of going to God, we try and fix our lives by ourselves. So prayer being communication with God is essential to this. It's the foundation of this. Obviously, we need the sacraments, but on the easiest, most fundamental, simple, and frequent level, we need a good prayer life. So I'm going to start by reviewing a couple of points about prayer as a refresher because we always need to be uh, reminded of prayer and coached in it. And the first thing and most important is to remember that the definition of prayer is the elevation of the heart and mind to God. Yes, there are other definitions. It's not like that's the only definition, but it is the most practical definition because of what prayer is. For example, prayer is certainly talking to God, but it's not just talking to God. It's also listening, which means it's we need a a more expanded definition. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. The point is, is that it's the elevation of the heart and mind to God. Among all of our formal prayers, the most important outside of the sacred liturgy is the rosary. I will never tire of emphasizing the fact that we need to pray our rosary. There is no better prayer to Christ in Mary that is more intimate, that meditates on the life of Christ, that invokes our Blessed Lady. It is the perfect devotion and the perfect prayer for us because it's easy, it's simple, and yet also profound. And so we really want to emphasize that. But not at the neglect of our personal prayer. If we want to have a good relationship in communicating with God, we need to work on our personal prayer in our own words as well. We always want to remember the four ends of prayer. Ends meaning purposes or goal, right? So it's adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication. Probably should have quizzed you on that. I'll try and do that next time, okay? Adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication. You always have something to praise God for, to say you're sorry for, to thank Him for, and to ask Him for. Whenever you're at a loss for prayer, whenever you're in a time where you know I'd like to talk to God, but I don't know what to say. Figure out what to praise Him for, say you're sorry for, thank Him for, and ask Him for. And there is never going to be an end to that. Now, someone might say, but Father, prayer is difficult. That's why I don't pray. And I respond to that with, yes, yes it is. So is anything else worth doing in this life. Anything worth anything requires effort. Now, prayer is difficult because we have trouble elevating our hearts and minds to God because we give our hearts to everybody and everything else other than God first. That's on us. That's our sinfulness. Prayer is also difficult because, of course, the enemies of our salvation, etc. All right? But it is essential. And we should also pray always. Now, again... You can't always be be repeating Hail Marys at every moment, but you can always elevate your heart and mind to God. Again, why that definition is so important, that it's not just speaking to God. We can always pray even in distracted circumstances, uh, and it's always better to pray in a distracted circumstance than to not pray at all, for example, as you're taking care of small children. Now, let's speak about prayer in a more specific way regarding the, the, the theme of healing. Again, the devil's a divider. We saw this all the way at the very beginning with Satan in the garden, right? He's trying to divide Adam and Eve from their heavenly father, and he does so with all of us as well. And so prayer is essential because it is what maintains or establishes that relationship on, from our side. Prayer is essential in the spiritual combat. We've spoken about this just recently several times, so I'm not going to emphasize the point too much, except that when we are in the spiritual combat, we need to be engaged in prayer. 
and not give up until the temptation is over. But it's also important for our healing. So remember, what keeps us in our wounds is our ungodly self-reliance, our ungodly self-reliance, where we have made a deliberate act of the will in which we have accepted identity lies, made ungodly vows and judgments, and hold on to our uh, lack of forgiveness. And those acts of the will need to be revoked and undone in prayer. My healing process actually began to work when I learned to do that and incorporated that into my life, where I rejected the lies, I revoked the judgments and the vows, and I offered forgiveness, even when I didn't feel it. Now, as we're praying for healing, or praying in general, some people, because of their wounds, have trouble praying at all. And what I mean by that is, for example, God is Father. If you have a substantial father wound, which many, many, many of us have, it may be difficult to imagine God as Father, to approach Him as Father, which is why it might be better to approach our Blessed Lord more or Our Lady. People who have great mother wounds can have a problem approaching Our Lady. They, don't, they just can't seem to get devotion to Our Lady. That's fine. As long as you're not being hateful, they understand. The point is, is to pray. The point is, is to approach God. How you do so, they'll work it out up here. They'll take care of it, okay? They'll take care of you. But you approach the best way you can, okay? Don't let those wounds keep you from that relationship. But as we're praying, it is essential, we go back to this point of this informal, silent prayer, which I call personal prayer. It's traditionally called maybe mental prayer as well, or meditation. We have to have this time of personal prayer where we can uh, bring, the, bring our wounds into this. Again, just think of a human relationship. If God were a mere human being, how long ago would he have dumped you for your lack of communication, Right? How poor is our relationship based off of our communication with God? Now, again, I'm only saying that as a rhetorical question. I don't know what your relationship is, but it's a good question to ask. How long, how much, how deep is your relationship with God based on the fact of how much you do or do not communicate regularly? Now, when we're talking about talking with God, and especially in this quiet time, this silence with the Lord, this meditation, personal prayer. There's two particular areas uh, regarding healing that I want to emphasize. The first is, and we've spoken about this a lot, uh, and not only in the pulpit, but I have to use it every day when I'm ministering, is we can bring and process our feelings in prayer. Remember, there's the four rules. Don't suppress your feelings, which means you need to actually feel them. Do not left-brain them, that is, rationalize why you shouldn't feel that way. Do not sin, and then surrender them to the Lord. And that last one is something that you can very easily do in your time of personal prayer, and it's very personal. Let yourself feel, but then surrender it. Let yourself feel, but then unite it with our Lord. Let yourself feel, but process it with Him. This is a very healthy way, both psychologically and spiritually, to deal with the things going on in your life. As we experience pain in our daily life, though, there's another area that we can bring to prayer or another aspect to this prayer. If you are in a situation where your emotional response is over the top, your emotional response is not consonant with the situation, and you've, you've observed this maybe in others if you haven't observed it yourself. Wow, he reacted way too strongly to that. Or she reacted way too strongly to that. What's really happening there is a trigger response where they're really reacting to something else. So for example, when an old lady in the parish tries to nag me about something, I immediately, the, 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 the guards come up and I get aggressive because what it does is reminds me of my mother, Right? I'm not really that mad at this woman. What I'm really doing is it's triggering a response to something else. No offense to my mother. None of our parents are perfect, right? 
a reason why a lot of people have a very strong emotional response to me in the parish uh, is not just because of my own faults and errors, but because they have had problems with their fathers or men in authority. And so there can also be a triggering there. The point is, is that whatever it is, we need to discern it. So when we're in those situations, usually after the fact, of course, after we've cooled down, right? Why did I respond that way? What was the big deal, right? We have to ask ourselves, what caused that? Why did I react so strongly? Another way of putting it might be, when have I felt this way before? And the older you are, the more self-knowledge you have, I should say. You don't have to be old to do this. The more self-knowledge you have and awareness of what goes on inside of you, the more you're going to see, oh, it's when this person of this sex and age or position in these circumstances says this thing to me, that's when I emotionally respond. Okay, now where did that happen to me before? Was it my second grade teacher that made fun of me for the way I sang? right? Was it my dad that did something to me because he, he caught me doing whatever, like whatever, whatever these things are, whatever these events are, these traumas are, those are the things then that we can discern them in prayer and keep bringing them to our Lord in that time of prayer and ask for healing in those areas and invite him, invite our lady into that memory. It's not navel-gazing. It's not preoccupation with yourself because it's prayer. You're elevating your heart and mind. You're inviting them in and you're connecting with our Lord, our Lady, uh, the Holy Spirit, St. Joseph, whoever it is you're talking to and asking them to come in and help you with that thing. Whatever that trauma is, whatever that is of emotion. Sit with that memory, uh, but again, do so in a prayerful way, which means elevating your heart and mind to God right? If nothing else, however, when it comes to this silent time, this personal prayer, it is acceptable and salutary to just sit. You don't have to produce thoughts. You should not try and produce feelings. Your mind can be flitting from one thing to another, but as long as you are not deliberately engaging those distractions, just being with God is healing. Just being with God, receiving his love, and offering him your love is a good and healthy thing. And so don't be self-conscious about it. Don't be preoccupied, but do it. Now, I pray that this series has been as helpful to as many of you that I don't know as it has been for all the people that I know it's been helpful to. I just want to say that... um, It does require work on your part, however. I can sit and preach for months until I'm blue in the face, and I have, but it does require engagement. I know there's a lot of fear. I know there are people that don't want to talk to me, and it's not just because they think I'm a jerk, okay? There's, there's, there's reasons why, and some of them are actually legitimate. So I'm not gonna, I don't, I'm not gonna judge that, right? However, however, sometimes you just have to get over it. Or find someone. Deacon is a very good person to talk to. There's a lot of people in the parish. If you want a recommendation, obviously, if you don't want to talk to me, you're probably not going to ask me, but I'll offer anyway. I'll be glad to point you in the direction of someone. There's a couple of the young men who I uh, am perfectly happy having coach in this, a couple of the young ladies, and some of the not-so-young men and women as well that I would be glad to send you to as a recommendation. If you just want to sit informally and talk about this. But If nothing else, make sure you bring it to the Lord in prayer. But it will help to have someone who is somewhat mature and, and, and at least somewhat holy in this to engage with it. Because you have to be an actor in this process. You cannot be passive. You have to engage. But I pray you do, if nothing else, for other people in your life. Because you may be doing okay. None of you are perfect. I know that. But you may be doing okay but there are plenty of people in your life that need this because if it's all about a reconciliation with God and a healthy relationship with God, since everyone was created for that, we need to do everything we can to help others to have that relationship as well.